let's start the chapter biomolecules as you can see this is the ncert textbook of biomolecules chapter and for just one or two chapters i'll be uploading in ncert textbook so stay tuned guys so let's start first of all see it is given the definition of biomolecules that is there chemically the carbohydrates may be the biomolecule is a carbohydrate so chemically carbohydrates may be defined as optically active polyhydroxy aldates or ketones or the compounds which produce such units on hydrolysis so here as you can see that is our next topic classification of carbohydrates you can see carbohydrates are classified on the basis of behavior on hydrolysis they have been broadly divided into following three groups one is monosaccharide another one oligosaccharide and third one is polysaccharide so let's study about monosaccharide monosaccharide is a carbohydrate that cannot be hydrolyzed further to give simpler hydro unit of polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone and is known as monosaccharide they cannot be classified into any simpler uh, any other because that is a simpler biomolecule about 20 monosaccharides are known to occur in nature and some common example are glucose fructose and ribose now oligosaccharides are the carbohydrates that yield 2 to 10 monosaccharide units on hydrolysis they are called oligosaccharide i hope you understood 2 to 10 all the monosaccharide 2 to 10 monosaccharide if you add you get oligosaccharide they are further classified into disaccharide trisaccharide tetrasaccharide etc depending upon the number of monosaccharide they provide yeah they provide uh, etc depending on the number of monosaccharide they provide on hydrolysis among these the most common are disaccharides the two monosaccharide obtained units obtained on hydrolysis of disaccharide may be same or different for example one molecule of sucrose on hydrolysis gives one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose whereas maltose gives two molecule of only glucose now what is polysaccharide polysaccharide is carbohydrate which yields large number of monosaccharide units on hydrolysis are called polysaccharides some common examples are starch cellulose glycogen gums etc polysaccharides are not sweet in taste hence they are also called non sugars now the carbohydrates may also be classified in either reducing or non reducing sugars all those carbohydrates which reduce filling solution and tolerance reagent which i discussed in the last lecture of aldehydes and ketones uh, are also referred to as reducing sugars all monosaccharides uh, whether aldose or ketose are reducing sugars now let us see monosaccharides the same thing there is no important points but you have to study glucose under monosaccharide because glucose is a monosaccharide see uh, this the table of different kinds of monosaccharide and aldehyde ketone these are the names of that three triose tetose pentose hexose eptose aldotriose aldo tetose aldo pentose aldo hexose and keto tetose keto same name starting with aldehyde and keto now let's study about glucose that is the preparation of glucose in every organic chemistry you will learn the preparation matter similarly preparation of glucose and there are four points that is first from sugar that is cane sugar and uh, and second one is from starch okay let's study them one by one first of all cane sugar it is uh, if sucrose is boiled with dilute hcl or sulfuric acid in alcoholic sugar glucose and fructose are obtained in equal amount whereas yeah the reaction is given below sucrose with water in the presence of sulfuric acid which produces h plus and gives glucose and fructose yeah there's no difference in molecular formula it's the same and uh, from next one is from starch commercially glucose is obtained by hydrolysis of starch by boiling it with dilute you know, sulfuric acid at 393 kelvin under pressure the starch of uh, cellulose structure of starch or uh, cellulose plus nh2o in the presence of h plus gives n c6h12o6 now the structure of glucose this is the structure of glucose one some minute yeah the structure of glucose cho cho oh4 ch2h glucose and here there are two points about that that's a small class formula was found to be this and on prolonged heating with hcl it forms n hexene sorry hexane suggesting that all six carbon atoms are linked in a straight chain this n hexane uh, when glucose is heated in the presence of hi it forms n hexane now see third point is glucose reacts with hydroxyamine to form oxime and adds molecular molecule of hydrogen cyanide to give cyanohydrin this reaction confirms the presence of carbonyl group in glucose see when glucose in the presence of hydroxylamine it's not hydroxylamine 
it forms an oxime and uh, you know and if we add hydrogen cyanide to the molecule of glucose it it gives the compound cyanohydrin and both of these confirm the presence of carbonyl group in glucose the next one is, uh, next point is that glucose gets oxidized to 6 carbon carboxylic acid that is glutamic acid on reaction with mild oxidizing agent like bromid wat bromine water this indicates that carbonyl group is present as an alternate group if glucose is added to in the presence of bromine water if it's heated uh, and you know bromine is a good oxidizing agent it forms gluconic acid it again indicates the presence of carbonyl group the uh, carbonyl group is present as an aldehyde group okay fifth point acetylation of glucose with acetic anhydride gives glucose pentacetate which confirms the presence of 5 oh group since it exists as stable compound 5 oh group should be attached to different carbon atoms see acetylation of glucose with acetic anhydride which glues gives uh, glucose pentacetate it confirms the this acetylation in the presence of acetic anhydride is called acetylation of glucose which gives 5 oh groups it confirms the presence of 5 OH group because of acetylation. Uh, that is what is mentioned in NCRD. Then, since it exists as a stable, stable compound, 5 OH group should be attached to different carbon atoms. So, it is stable. See, the sixth point which you need to know is that on oxidation with nitric acid, glucose as well as gluconic acid both yield dicarboxylic acid. That is sacric acid. This indicates the presence of primary alcohol OH group. See what happens is that when glucose is oxidized with nitric acid and uh, also as well as uh, this one gluconic acid. See when glucose is oxidized with nitric acid as well as gluconic acid both, both of them yield sacric acid. Or, which is a dicarboxylic acid. This indicates that there is a presence of primary alcohol OH group in the glucose. All of this are kind of not preparation reaction but it gives the proof of it indicates that there is carboxylic group and OH group in glucose. That is one of the physical properties of glucose and you know here in the structure what you need to know is that this is plus glyceraldehyde and this is minus glyceraldehyde. In plus glyceraldehyde, what you need to know is that, see, even in number line, negative is in the left side and positive is in the right side. And even here, positive, just consider OH because OH is main for us and it's given in red color mark and H is found everywhere. So when it is positive, OH is towards the right and negative is OH is towards the left. Now let me tell you what is T and L configuration. As you can see in this, See, over here, D actually represents the configuration. Actually, you need not know the difference between D and L because uh, texture and level rotatory is completely isomerism part. Only here what matters is that plus and L. I already told you what is the difference between plus and minus. But D is shown in each and every structure. Now, this is the structure of D plus glyceraldehyde and this is the structure of D, D plus glucose. Now, let us study the next topic, cyclic structure of glucose. As you know, there is also this is straight structure of glucose uh, there's some other name which you will get in the reference book there's also cyclic structure of glucose let me show the example kind of this this is cyclic structure but that's not the structure of glucose which i'll be showing later uh, within some time okay first point is that despite having aldehyde group glucose does not use stiff test and it does not form hydrogen sulfide addition product with NaHSO3 it does not give the uh, stiff test and it does not form hydrogen sulfide addition product with NaHSO3 you just need to know about that point and the pentaacetate of glucose does not react with hydroxyamine indicates the absence of free CHO group pentaacetate of glucose does not react with uh, hydroxylamine which indicates the absence of free CHO group and glucose is found to exist in two different crystalline forms that are named as alpha and beta the alpha form of glucose this is the melting point you did not remember this is obtained by crystallization from concentrated solution of glucose at some temperature which while the beta form don't remember is obtained by crystallization from hot and saturated aqueous solution those are just the two forms of glucose here it's clearly given the two forms this is alpha d plus glucose and this is beta d plus glucose and they are in equilibrium with the structure of glucose 
see both are d plus glucose d plus glucose but the only difference between alpha and beta is given over here see alpha oh is towards the right side that is alpha is always a positive stuff and beta is something which is negative dangerous so it is minus okay and that's in equilibrium with this structure and that's no much difference if you shift that oh over there becomes that the two cyclic hemiacetyl form of glucose differs only in the configuration of hydroxylamine it is even i told you hydroxylamine and they are called anomeric compounds see then the early end of the carbon before cyclization it's given just the point such isomers that is alpha form and beta form are called anomers <laughs> mentioned again and the six members of cyclic structure of glucose is called pyrano structure pyrano structure i'll show you later Alpha and beta in an analogy with pyran. Pyran is a cyclic organic compound with one oxygen atom and five carbon atoms in the ring. One oxygen and five carbon atoms in the ring. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five carbon atoms in the ring. The cyclic structure of glucose is more correctly represented by the Haver structure as given below. See, this structure is the cyclic structure of glucose and it is the actual representation of the glucose, not this. This is not the actual representation of glucose. That is kind of you know just for your understanding but this is the actual structure it's called Haver structure it's alpha d plus glucopyranose and beta d plus glucopyranose and you need to know this structure it will come in exam be it boards on it it will come and it is derived from pyran okay just buy it uh next topic is fructose fructose is an important keto exos it is obtained along with glucose by hydrolysis of diasaccharide understood that is a sucrose it's a natural monosaccharide found in fruit, honey, vegetable. Its pure form is also used in sweetener. It's not important. It's natural monosaccharide form in few fruit, honey, or monosaccharide. But what is important is that its pure form is used as a sweetener. It is also important keto hexose. Then you can see the structure of fructose. If you want to know the structure of fructose, you need to know its molecular formula. That is C6H12O6. That is the molecular formula of glucose and fructose are the same. And this is the structure of furan. Pyran over here and this is furan. This is alpha D minus fructofuranose and alpha D minus fructofuranose. Alpha beta different D don't consider it just it's not for your reference, just need to know. And minus minus, you know minus is left side, OH is left side, it's minus. That is OH is left side over here. Yes. The cyclic structure of the two anomers of fructose are represented by Howard structure as given below. This is the Howard structure. Fructose. Now the next topic which you need to know is about diasaccharides. And see diasaccharide, the first type of kind of diasaccharide is sucrose. Sucrose, you uh, need not know about sucrose, you just need to know its structure and what it does when it reacts with uh, H2O. Use glucose and fructose, it's already discussed. And this is structure of glucose, uh, sorry, sucrose, the most important structure. And you know the only difference between sucrose, maltose, and you know, another brother of that, that is lactose is situated in this, this glycosidic bond. The glycosidic bond in sucrose is in this way, and the glycosidic bond of maltose is also in this way. But you can see the difference in the structures. All of that is same. And here it is alpha D glucose and beta D fructose from sucrose. So that is the difference. Glycosidic bond is the same. But here in maltose it's alpha D glucose and alpha D glucose. The same structure. So it's easy. Maltose. Sucrose is a bit kind of twisty. Fructose. Whereas in the next page which you can see. Lactose. What happens is that it is beta D galactose and beta D glucose. Fully different. And it's connected by the glycosidic bond which is in a zigzag shape and it's easy to remember don't worry just try to remember that and this is the structure of a polysaccharide which is known as amylose and all of these are and you know in case of polysaccharide all of them are connected <laughs> in a way glucose is connected so these are all glucose amylose simple and this is the structure of amylopectin again glucose connected in the form of a chain and next is cellulose again glucose connected in form of this way and let's go to the next topic okay next topic is classification of amino acids see first of all uh, before knowing about amino acid which is a simple topic you need to know what is essential amino acid and uh, okay non-essential amino acid and essential amino acids 
the amino acids which can be synthesized in our body are called non-essential amino acids which can be synthesized in our body we do not require it from external source because our body synthesizes it by its own so it's non-essential on the other hand those which cannot be synthesized in the body and must be obtained through that known as essential amino acids See, amino acids are usually colorless crystalline solids. They are water soluble, high melting solids and behave like salts rather than simple amines or carboxylic acids. The behavior is due to the presence of both acidic carboxyl group and basic that is amino group groups in the same molecule. The aqueous solution, the carboxyl group that can lose the proton and amine group uh, can accept a proton and give rise to a dipole ion which is our favorite zuterion which all of us know and this is a neutral but contains both positive and negative charge in zuterionic form amino acids show amphoteric behavior as well as they react with both acids and bases that's the importance of zuterion you can see they are in equilibrium zuterion is ion which contains both positive over here both positive as well as negative both positive as well as negative on the ion which exists as both positive and negative are called zuterion so they react with both acids and bases okay next one is structure of protein and you know there's no other point which is important in ncrt except this this diagram questions are formed only from this let us see what is so special in this diagram there's nothing much special but you know it is h2n ch2coh plus h2n chcoh but it is conducted by a methyl group and hydrolysis gives this compound H2N, CH2, CH, all the common compounds are connected and this gets connected in between that is CO and NH by peptide link. This is the structure of uh, glycyl, glycyl alanine. Yeah, so, alanine it is not important. Let's go to the next page. Not at all, not at all. Studied in bio. Not at all. Okay, this one. Now let us study the classifications of vitamins. See, why I found this point important is that you have to remember some kind of vitamins. That is fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins. Vitamins which are soluble in fats and oils but insoluble in water are kept in this group obviously. And these are the things which you need to remember this. One is vitamin A, D, E and K. They are stored in liver and adipose fat storing tissue. Now what are water soluble vitamins? That is B group vitamins and vitamin C are soluble in water so that they are grouped in this together. So they are grouped together. Okay. Water soluble vitamins must be supplied regularly in that because they are readily excreted in the urine and cannot be stored. Except vitamin B12 in our body. Understood? Okay. Now you see I wrote this as important because this table is very important and every year you can see a lot of questions flushing from this table flushing out from this table okay what you need to know first of all vitamin a all kinds of vitamin vitamin a sources are fish liver oil carrots butter milk and deficiency symptoms are zero thalmia that is hardening of cornea of cornea of eye and night blindness vitamin b1 that is thiamine yeast sources are milk yeast green vegetable cereals and deficient symptoms very very loss of appetite retarded growth that is what is very very loss of appetite and retarded growth now vitamin b12 uh, it's also called riboflavin sources are milk egg white liver and kidney now what is the deficiency disease kilosis that is fission fissuring at the cornea corners sorry fissuring at the corners of the mouth and lips and digestive disorders and burning sensation of the skin vitamin b6 uh, pyridoxin sosa yeast milk egg yolk cereals grams deficiency disease is convulsions vitamin b12 sources are meat fish egg and curd and deficiency diseases are pernicious anemia that is rbc deficiency in hemoglobin now the name of the vitamin is uh, vitamin c that is ascorbic acid and the source of citrus fruit um, amla and green leafy vegetable deficiency symptoms uh, diseases are scurvy that is bleeding comes and vitamin d so exposure to sunlight fish and uh, yeah exposure to sunlight fish and egg yolk, egg yolk. deficiency diseases are rickets that is bone deformation in children osteo 
osteomalacia soft bones its osteomalacia is also known as osteoporosis soft bones and uh, joint pain in adults now vitamin k vitamin k the sources are vegetable oil like wheat germ oil sunflower oil etc increase uh, fragility of rbc and muscular weakness now, vitamin k source are green leafy vegetable increased blood clotting time okay you studied all now the next is chemical composition of nucleic acid and you just need to know the structure of beta d ribose and beta 2 and d2 dextrose fast and all the structures which you learned in biomolecules and the structure of this nucleic acid nucleotides and nucleosides and i think yeah the chapter comes from then thank you okay guys i should repeat again and again that solving questions clears a concept and makes it pin okay thank you okay these are the answers guys thank you okay guys if you like my video do hit the bell icon and subscribe button so that you will be notified with all upcoming videos which is fully free and enjoy unlimited lectures thank you